friends, how are you? Welcome back to another one of my drama uni fanfiction recommendations and today we are going to do my novellas favorites. Uh, by my definition, novellas are medium length story about 30 to 50,000 words long so they are not as much of a commitment to your time and emotions like the story that I have shared in the last video but there are still enough space for the author to develop the plot and give us some insights into the characters so if that is your thing then welcome to my favorite drama uni novellas. Now you already know that we are going to start with my most favorite and if I were to do a master list of all of my Dramione story regardless of um, the length or the genre then this work is definitely end up on my top 5 favorite of all time you can ignore my past 10 recommendation and the next 10 recommendation but please do not ignore this one and that is One of the Monsters by Gal Foy now Gal Foy is my favorite Dramione author and One of the Monsters is my favorite work of her so I was a little bit surprised to see not a lot of talk going on out there about this story the synopsis for this story has three sentences. They can pass as a single line and this single line is the line I love the most out of all 300 stories that I have read and it reads Doubt was a funny thing. It was like a tick, harmless on the surface but when it burrowed in deep, extremely dangerous. For Draco Malfoy, successful dead eater, ruthless soldier, and proud pure blood, it may just be his downfall. This is an alternative wartime story in the universe where the war dragged on and on for years. So Draco started to doubt himself, the purpose of the war, and his involvement in the whole thing. So he turned to a very muggle escape to deal with his problem. This is such a beautifully written story with a storyline so expensive, the details so clever and so intricate that I still cannot believe that I get to read this story for free. And this is one of the work that once you get to the end and when every piece of the puzzle falls into place, you just go. I just got illuminated by a thousand years of light. I remember I was so hungover on this story that I couldn't shut up about it. I spent the whole one hour car ride telling my boyfriend everything about this story. I love everything about it, the plot, the twists and turns, the character, the details the thrill, the tenderness, so I can assure you that you will not regret the decision to read One of the Monsters by Gal Foy. Please go ahead and do it right now. You can X out my video and go ahead and read the story. Next we have Until the Ink Runs Dry and the Sequel Indelible Ink by Akio Mianir. This is a story written entirely in the format of letters between Draco and Hermione because Draco is currently surfing time in Azkaban and Hermione is working on getting everyone who she believes is over sentence uh, out there and that is the start of their relationship. The synopsis for this story is one again a single line and I don't know if this is a coincidence or if I just truly do have a thing for single line synopsis but this line is also among my most beloved Dream Uni lines of all time and it reads your mistake is assuming I have better angel at all DM and I love this line because I feel like it captivates the whole storyline and the dynamic of the relationship really well and this is such a heartfelt story with a very genuine relationship development between them. I also love the characterization of Draco and Hermione in this. They are what I personally expect them to be. So we have a Hermione who is very eager to help others. She truly genuinely cares about people, trying to put them before herself sometime as well. And we have a Draco who is a little bit cold and cruel because he needs to maintain that facade about him but truly he is just a softy wanting to love, wanting to be loved. So I love how the author lays in Draco's emotion and sleep feelings into his letter so that we can see how truly lonely he is, how much being Azkaban plays a toll on him and how much it means to him to have someone who truly cares about him and love him just for himself. And it broke my heart when I read when he writes to Hermione that he has the most beautiful cells in Azkaban because he has like a baby crane from Hermione as decorations. This is a one of a story that I always come back to whenever I don't feel like reading because I feel like it heals me in a very special way that is not easy to find in other stories. So if you want to read something well written in a little bit of a different format and with a sharp focus on just the love words alone then I would recommend you to read Until the Ingram Dry in the sequel. Next we have Don't Threaten Me with a Good Time by Monster Leave Me Home. This is a post-war story featuring a very very troublesome Draco to the point where his parents, the famous Lucius Narcissa Malfoy, <laughs> hire the muggle-born poster girl to shape him into a marriageable bachelor so that he can receive his inheritance and if you are here listening to me babbling on and on about these two then you already know what is going to happen this is one of a story that I didn't expect it to make it to my top favorite story but I ended up loving it so much and like I said before you can have like an idea of what is going to happen but I was in no way prepared for the journey to get there I personally always find that I feel more connected and related to the characters of Draco more than Hermione so it broke my heart to discover him in this story chapter by chapter so if you want to read a story with a good mixture of drama and angsty and fluff and spice then this story is for you. Next we have For the Best by Hawthorne Whisperer and this is a new world drama uni story. I think it just got complete back in January. 
this is a post-war story about marriage of convenience or fake marriage um, in this story Draco needs to be married so that he can receive his inheritance but with only one month left to his birthday his first joy a, a bride who is Pansy ran away to marry Neville so he's out of bride and Hermione needs funding for her nonprofit organization and who has more money than her schoolyard foe Draco Malfoy so they get married um, on the promise that once he receives his inheritance he will fund her project and they can part way from there I have read many fake dating and fake marriages story because I personally really enjoy the trope so I can assure you that For the Best is among the best written and developed story out there on this trope For me personally, when I read fanfiction, I pay a lot of attention to the interactions between them how they express their love, how they conceal their feeling, or how they express their feeling, all that kind of stuff and with For the Best, I feel well satisfied The interaction between them is very tender, very sweet, and very genuine and I think the best way to describe their love in this um, story is that their love is very quiet but it speaks volume. So if you like to read story with a perfect balance between angst and fluff, with a little bit of drama and a little bit of spice, then go ahead and read for the best. Next we have Enemies with Benefits by Drusella Maxima and in this story we have another relationship of convenience but they are enemies with benefits. Now they are um, co-workers at the Ministry of Magic and one wild night turned into a very interesting ride for them both. I personally don't really enjoy reading story with the main focus on Smooth alone but I find myself to really enjoy this story because I feel like the spices written in here is perfect for their story and for me as a reader now i really enjoy hermione in this because i think she is among the most mature and understanding hermione out there but we have a very fickle draco he recoils as the first idea of falling in love and having to make a commitment because he is who he is and she is who she is but once she he gets over that um, resistance of his then he is very tender he cares a lot about her protect her stand up to people for her so if you enjoy um, a story that is mainly lemons and limes with a little bit of drama and perfect balance between angst and fluff then go ahead and read enemies with benefit next we're going back to hard work with a very lighter eight year story and that is innocent monster by it's come to this in this story we follow draco through the events of going back to Hogwarts after the war but what he didn't expect was for a first year uh, Muggleborn Slytherin to befriend him and now he has to protect her <laughs> on top of everything because her friends and her decided that it was a good idea to adopt a flesh-eating monster as their pet so he has to seek out the help from someone the only one that he thinks is capable and we know who that only one is so that is the start of their story I think despite the story being very lighthearted and very funny, it includes the discussion of some of the more serious topics like PTSD or abusive parents, um, childhood trauma, therapies, all those things. Now, I think Innocent Monster remind me a lot of the Gloriana set and the Squeaky Mice, uh, but for me personally, I didn't enjoy the Gloriana set that much because I think there was just too much going on and the focus of the story is not sharply on um, Draco and Hermione, which is what I personally prefer so I think that I enjoy Innocent Monster a lot more because of that reason so if you would like to read a Hogwarts 8 year story with a lot of supporting characters with uh, the perfect amount of fluff and a little bit of angst um, then I think Innocent Monster is perfect for you next we have 5 Day by Ravy Snake and this is a heavy story on survival they were trapped together in this story they were dying and no one knows this is not a drill this is a, very, this is a story with a very realistic description of death and disease and all that kind of stuff so if it's not for you please go ahead and skip over to the next recommendations because I remember I put off reading this story for so long because I didn't think I could cope with having to see them in pain but when I started reading it then I understand why this week was so well recommended now I was such a sucker for their one-on-one -on -one interactions and in this story because they are tra trapped together with no one else this is just a galore for me so I love their banter their conversations I love how the authors allow us to see glimpses of their past and how they truly care for each other despite everything else that was going on now if you don't want to get spoiled and if you would like to enjoy this story please also go ahead and skip over to the next part because I will be discussing the ending now I know that this story Story has a happy ending because it was recommended under a story with a lot of angst and a happy ending so I know going in that this was going to be a happy ending but while I was reading at some point I didn't believe that this was going to be a happy ending and I was thinking that the person who recommended this story to me was tricking me it was so hard that I skipped over the part where somebody died because I couldn't bear it 
but overall i think this is such a perfect read and i would recommend it if you can stomach the ink next we have uncoffin by lady of clone and this is a wartime alternative universe story where voldemort win and draco is a very high profile and prominent dead eater and in order to survive hermione has to stay with the remaining of the weasley family who were Arthur, Molly, and Ginny, but they all had to alter their appearance. So everyone who fought against the um, Voldemort regime lost their house and had to live in a resettlement area called Warren. Muggleborn were not allowed to enter into the salary system, and Half-Blood can work, but it's very hard for them to obtain the paperwork. So everyone was living in poverty, they did not have enough food or money or medicines. So a lot of younger turned themselves into sex worker in order to survive. And by chances, Hermione and Draco reunited. But Draco did not know who Hermione was because of her appearance. Now, this is a very heavy read with a lot of trigger warnings, so I would inform yourself before you dive into this work. This is a story with more angst than you could imagine, and it broke my heart even when I reread it for the second time and the third time. I really love the characterization of Draco in this one. He's a complicated character with a lot of internal conflicts, and the author did a very good job channeling those emotions and feelings and conflicts through Hermione because we get to see the story from her point of view. You will find that there is a lot of similarities between this story and Manacle. So if you have enjoyed Manacle or any other um, Wolf Voldemort win alternative universe story, then I would definitely give Uncuffin a try because I personally think that this is a classic when it comes to Voldemort win AU stories. Lastly, we're back at Hogwarts again with a translated fic and this is called A More Deliria Nervosa by Cup of Madness and it was translated into English by Dandelion Wine. This is originally written in um, Russian with a focus on Hanahaki disease and if you are not familiar, Hanahaki disease is a fictional deadly disease which caused the victim to cough up or vomit um, petals of flowers because of unrequited love and there are generally two ways to cure this disease. The first one is if the person of interest um, reciprocate their love which makes the love not <laughs> unrequited anymore then they'll be okay or secondly they have to remove um, the infection but by doing that you will make the victim emotionless emotionless so they will not feel anything at all for the rest of their life so in this story we have a pining Hermione loving someone that she should not and we know who that someone is this is a story that hurts you from the very beginning to almost the very end so it is completely my cup of tea because I personally enjoy reading angst but I have to have a insurance or like a guarantee that they're going to be happy in the end. So because the author include a happily ever after tag in their story, I knew that by the end Draco would have fallen in love with Hermione. But I think that the journey to get there is very realistic, it's believable, it doesn't go bam bam I love you and she's cure. And I think that the translator did a very very good job translating this work from Russian to English. If you are like me and enjoy reading story with a lot of angst and a little bit of happy ending at the end, then this story is for you. And that is all of my favorite novella drum unit story and if you would like me to do more of the favorite story or if you want me to focus on any authors in particular please go ahead and leave me a comment down below and i will see you in the next video bye oh please also subscribe so that you don't miss my future videos